Okay, so in this video, what we're going to do is we are just going to look at um, some InDesign kind of if you're setting something up for print, what does that look like? How do you how do you set that up? What are some things that you do? So I have this InDesign checklist that we're going to go through as far as what they are, and then we're going to take um, we're going to take an actual uh, document and go through these same steps. And so I'm going to kind of go back and forth uh, with this. So the first thing is we're going to look at what um, is called bleed. So we're looking at what that bleed really is. So it is a quarter of an inch, which is 0.125, um, all the way around. Okay, so the bleed, which we'll get into, is this outside edge that's here. So if we take a look at this, um, So if we take a look at this document here, so this edge here is just the outside of the document. Anything that goes to the outside over here is called the bleed. Now, what the bleed is for is when people are cutting, right, cutting your brochure, your poster, or whatever, you, there's a little bit of excess that's over top just for mistakes. Okay, so we want to make sure there's a bleed because otherwise, if you cut really if it does, there's no bleed and someone makes a mistake, even if it's like a 32nd of an inch, we'll see the white of the paper, right? So we want to make sure that there's, that's in there and, and, and we'll do that. Make sure all images are CMYK if you're exporting for print. If it's something that you've designed in InDesign and it's exporting out to somewhere else, no need to worry about it. But we're going to do it just for print just so we can see how that's done. Uh, make sure all your typefaces are active in there. Sometimes typefaces are change locations, just making sure you um, actually export with them. Um, all images that are meant to the edge go to the bleed line, um, right? So if they go to the edge, they should go over a little bit to the bleed line or inside. All unwanted colors deleted. I'll show you how to do that as well because we don't want unwanted colors in there because then if a pre-press person is looking at this, um, they're just not kind of understanding what to do. So let's go through all this stuff just so you can kind of see. So let's go to your document that's here. So we're going to choose this. We've been using this. First, we're going to make sure that the bleed is set up. So I'm going to hit W on my keyboard here just so we can kind of see um, what's going on. I'm going to select my image and I'm going to make sure you can see there's a color actually in the background of this image and I'm going to turn it off. And I want to make sure See, there's a color hiding behind there that I actually don't need. I could see that a little bit. So um, I'm going to try to access that and delete that. There we go. But that's still not to the bleed. I need to make sure this is to the bleed. So let's go to your document setup. So we're going to go to file and document setup. And you can see here right where it says bleeds and slugs. Click the little down arrow. And we're going to do 0.125. And I'm just going to hit tab and it should go all the way across here. Now, a lot of people ask what the slug is. The slug is just an extra area for you to put notes. You never need to do it. Um, I've never had to put in a slug, but that's what it is. So let's go ahead and do, you can hit preview and you can see that little red line is there. Let's actually turn on the slug just so you can see what it is. And so let's do 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And you can see this, this little margin that happens over here. It's just for you to put additional information if you have anything that you want to tell the pre-press person they know that if it's in there not to print it. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and do okay. Now, just because you have the bleed on doesn't mean it's actually going to go to it. So we need to actually move this image all the way out to the bleed line, right? So we can kind of click and drag this out. So you're not moving necessarily the image. We're just moving the box that's here. So you can do that. You can also do it kind of mathematically. Um, it takes a little bit of, of getting used to, but we could say in our X and Y, let's go negative 0.125 and negative 0.125. Now I could also just move it, um, but there's something about being able to do this mathematically. Now I can add plus 0.25 because it's a one. So watch what happens. It's going to add that all the way to the side. And you can see that's mathematically correct. Now, if that's too much for you, just kind of click and drag it. But I would just like to make sure that it's perfect and always align there. Okay, so that's the first thing. We've made sure that this is um, checklist, right? The done. All images are CMYK. All right, so let's go over to our links palette. And if you click on it, it, it should say all the stuff about this. Um, 
it says modified size, format, JPEG. Um, oh, there we go. Okay, so click on the actual individual image that's here, and you can see the color space says RGB. Well, if we're doing this for print, um, I need to kind of convert that over to CMYK. And I can't do it actually from InDesign. I need to do it from Photoshop. So I'm going to Option or Alt, double click here, and it should bring up Photoshop here. And now I'm going to go Image, Mode, CMYK. I'm going to do OK. And one other thing is I also need to save as, we're going to save this out as a TIFF. Let's see, where do I have it? Okay, so we're going to save this out as a TIFF. And for right now, I'm actually just going to put it on my desktop, save, and we're going to do OK. So now I'm going to have to go back to InDesign here, go back to the links, and I'm actually going to link them both together. So click on the folder where I just have two pages of them, so there's two of them. And I'm going to go back to link here. And it's going to say, where do you want this? And actually, I'm just going to, sorry, I'm just going to go back and say this in the right place. There we go, package, TIFF. Okay, okay. So now I'm going to go back to InDesign here. We're going to replace it. We're going to go to link and find where that is. Here's the TIFF. You always want a TIFF for print, JPEG for anything else. Okay, so now it has replaced them. And if I click on it, you can see now the color space is CMYK. Perfect. Okay, so that is just the first two. All typefaces are active. Um, we can see that if I take it off W, if the typeface wasn't active or it was missing or, or had something else, these would be highlighted pink, which it's not, so we're good there. Right, so checklist, that's fine. All images meant to the edge go all the way to the edge. We already did that. All unwanted colors deleted. This is a very big one. So I'm going to go to my colors. I'm going to go here and I'm going to do select all unused, right? And then I'm just going to hit trash. So what I have here is I have um, these colors that are used in here. And if I look at that and let's go to my second page, right? And this is done purposely. I go to my second page. Oh, okay. So it's not extended. I also have a color in the background of this. So let's get rid of that. I also, again, have this other thing back here. Oops. See if I can grab that. There it is. I'm going to delete that. And I'm also going to bring this out to the edges as well. Right? Just so this is now done here. But you can see this color is what's called a Pantone color. So you can't have those Pantone colors in there, um, especially if you're doing this for print, because this would then be a fifth color because you have cyan, magenta, yellow, black, and this Pantone um, Rubine Red C. So I'm going to double click on that color. And I'm going to say, what am I going to say? Instead of my color mode, I want this to be a CMYK color. And I want to change it from spot to process. And I want to say name with color value. Now, you can see all these weird numbers here. You can't have that. These have to be in increments of five, right? So 10, we can go 45, and we're actually just going to go zero for that. And we're going to do OK. Now I'm going to go back to select all unused. Trash that. So now we just have the two colors that are used in here and in here. Perfect. OK. Oops, wrong slide. Um, make sure there are correct colors, print RGB, which we already did. If Pantone is required, make sure um, we did that. Oh, package in design. All right, so now we're ready to package. So now we've done all that. We've changed all the colors. We've, we've matched all that stuff. Now we're ready to send this to package. So we're going to go file, and we are going to go to package. There it is. So you shouldn't have any... Um, there will be caution signs in here. We don't want any of that. We can go to that and we can see, all right, here are the typefaces. Okay, they're okay. Links and images. Um, two links found, zero are missing, perfect. Colors and inks, it'll tell you all the inks that are used, right? So it's just four colors, perfect. And now we're gonna go to package. Publication must be saved. All right, so let's save this. Um, 
and let's save it where it needs to go. And I'm going to call this my Ami Free Press, right? And okay, so let's take a look at the links here. So include IDML, you need that. Let's include uh, PDF for prints. Um, yep, okay. Um, the one thing with, let's not include that. I want to show you something else we can do with the, um, with that, because I don't know if it's going to have the bleeds that are in there. So let's just kind of put this in there. Make sure you copy the fonts, copy linked graphics, update. These three should be checked. IDML is just, um, it's called an InDesign markup language. It's so that somebody can use this if they don't have your current version of InDesign. And we're going to go ahead and do package. Just giving you restrictions on typefaces. Okay, so take a couple seconds. It'll pull all that stuff. So let's see what that looks like, right? Let's just see what um, it did here. So let's go to and package. Sorry, I forgot where I put things. There we go, Miami Prepress. And you can see links are there. The fonts are there. And here are my um, packages. Now, let's go to uh, do an e uh, a PDF. So we're going to export. So file, uh, export, or command and control E. And we are going to do it as a PD uh, PDF. And we're going to put it right in this package that's here. And the only thing I want to make sure that it does is you see where it says marks and bleeds, right? I want to make sure it uses the document bleed setting. I want to make sure it pulls these uh, in. Now, sometimes you need crop marks, sometimes you don't. So let's just kind of put all the printer marks just so you can see what they are and do export. Perfect. And let's take a look at what that looks like. And here's the PDF. So what this looks like is, I don't know if you've ever seen a press page, but you see here are the crop marks, here are the bleed marks, right? So it gives you that. Here are just the colors so they can start to match colors and what that looks like. And that is what you could turn in, right? And it says the name of the says the name of it when I exported all that kind of stuff. Now different places will ask for different things. Um, let's take a look at what it looks like uh, without all those. So let's export again, Command or Control E, and we're just going to call this two. And I'm just going to do marks and bleeds. I'm actually going to do none of them, but use the use the document bleed settings. We're going to go ahead and do export, and let's take a look at what that looks like. And you can see it's everything just without that. So the bleeds are there. They're just not uh, marked there. But each one has, each press has their different way of doing this. Anyway, so that's how you do that. Um, you can see everything is linked there. This is not only if you need to send it to somebody, um, but if you need to work on a different computer, who's not going to have your typeface, is not going to have all that stuff, you need to make sure you package it um, together. All right, so that's the kind of way that you need to do every um, every project you work on, everything that you work on. You're going to be using um, th this technique, these things, to make sure that all your stuff is perfect um, for sending it to press. Um, so that is packaging inside of InDesign.